I respond this video to a couple of videos, kind of mixing subjects, I think, a little bit. But anyway, um, so first, conference report has uh, been responding uh, to Piro, and uh, we initiated a conversation about uh, the aggressiveness of vegetarianism, which is sort of a political discussion, but he did make a good video just pointing out the arguments for vegetarianism. So that part is good in terms of my debate. Um, so, but yeah, it's, it's kind of hard to draw a line where the conversation should, how far it should go afield. Um, so anyway, on the political question, you know, when is it okay for vegetarians to basically just draw the line and say, yeah, no more of this bullshit. And that's always a political question, and it's always kind of just bullshit. It's, it's going to be decided by power, you know, majority versus minority, um, unfortunately. And, um, you know, real rights won't have much to do with it. Uh, I would argue that there is it, it, there is no right to be an asshole and eating meat um, when it's been demonstrated that it's not a necessary vice uh, is being an asshole. I mean, there's an obvious harm caused, um, an undisputable harm, um, sort of the end, where other things that we as a society have persecuted, like cigarette smoking, um, yeah, if you take it out of the public realm, then it's just a personal vice and it's none of your business and yet we have a huge penalty placed on cigarette smokers so it seems obvious that once uh, meat eaters are a minority um, they'll likely <clears throat> be obliged to become a smaller and smaller percentage of the population through different methods of extorting them out of their freedom uh, to be an asshole um, I mean right now we have laws against certain religious practices so if the religion is popular enough, like Judaism, well, then we let them play their little sadistic games with animals. <clears throat> but if the religion is a minority religion, like, I don't know, the frog god or something, you know, hippity-hoppity, and people believe that they can sacrifice animals, like, you know, cut the head off a chicken, you know, for their god, hippity-hoppity, um, yeah, we're not going to let them do that shit because it's, a, it's, it's such a tiny minority. It has no credibility or clout. And so it's, yeah, why, why should we put up with that kind of nonsense? <clears throat> but theoretically, there's no difference in the sense that the nonsense is equally nonsensical. Um, stupid ritual killing is just ritual killing, and it should be described as stupid and unacceptable for intelligent human behavior. It doesn't meet the standard. So anyway, you read the comments on Pyro's video, and they really are hilarious. Uh, sort of the same characters, this Ellenic Coast guy has turned into a real asshole. Um, great text arguing with him, and then derived energy arguing with Pyro a bit. And, and Pyro's just going back to the same old crap. Um, you know, the plants feel. Um, so that justifies harming animals because, well, the plants feel. Uh, there's also been made this argument that's been refuted over and over and over again about how many animals are killed, um, you know, in harvesting crops. And it's completely <laughs> irrelevant to the argument because the fact is, if you stop eating meat, um, you know all these farm animals. They, 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 you know, if, if we if we culled natural animals, you wouldn't be able to produce nearly enough meat to 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 satisfy demand. So, um, you know, the price of meat would be five or ten times where it is now because you just wouldn't get the yield. And the only way you get the yield is by industrial farming the food for these animals. If you don't supplement their diet with high value grains you're not going to have big fat cows to eat. You're not going to have a, a, a you know a dollar fifty McDonald's hamburger. It's just not going to exist anymore. So it's just a big fat lie. If you stopped eating meat, we would have to farm less, so less little critters would be abused in the farming process. It's just a fact. Your meat costs a huge amount of energy to produce um, and to, to gratify you. He even made some dopey argument about like we've been doing this for a million years and you know uh, it's a million year old habit or some kind of other bullshit like that and it's just such nonsense it's all about fire it's just a, you know if, if meat didn't it just incidentally happens to turn out that yeah when you cook proteins they turn into sugars uh, you know and fats turn into sweets and it sweetens the meat makes it edible but it wouldn't be edible in its raw state you wouldn't want it um, if you were in a zoo they wouldn't be throwing goddamn raw meat at you. Um, it's not what you're made to eat. It's not made what you're made to digest. This is all just bullshit. Um, and so you're just, it's just an old addiction. It's been proven to be completely irrelevant. You don't need to eat animals. It's just nonsense. Um, and 
it's just plainly um, an unnecessary cruelty. Uh, but all these people are just going to keep saying they, they, they're all for unnecessary cruelty because they don't really account for any of it. They, they dismiss it. They just make these idiotic comparisons that the, the value of a dog is the same as a carrot. So we can treat dogs like carrots um, because somehow there's a, an equal sign there. But human beings are somehow, there's no equal signs for a human being. Human beings are like five million elephants. I mean, you could torture five million elephants before you could torture one human being by this idiotic, inane, silly, nonsensical logic. Um, they somehow equate vocalization and language uh, with having the ability to suffer. And it's just nonsense. It's so imbecilic, it probably should be outlawed as a thought crime. It's just, it just should be so obscene to the very concept of logic uh, that it shouldn't be acceptable. So anyway, that sort of bends me to the Modern Mystics most recent video. Um, where he sort of, you know, makes the point, um, or confirms the idea that um, there's a pointlessness to this thing, and you can't, you know, you just can't undo that fact that all this is, is, you know, he didn't say it in these words, but we create need. We're need machines. It's not until we exist does the universe have a problem. The universe doesn't have a problem until we show up to make the problem. We are the mess. We are the spilt milk. It needs cleaning up. Sentience is that problem. Um, it, it creates an automatic dilemma um, because it is a need machine. It's that simple. And there's no, again, escaping the simple logic um, that there's no need for the need. The need is all a perception of human um, bullshit. Um, we make up this idea that there's some value to this. The animals are only eking through their existence. They're not trying to survive. They're only surviving by the incidental fact that they are striving to achieve comfort, and comfort will likely lead to their survival. Um, and that's another issue here, too, with this whole natural farming culling thing. It's got to be realized. We don't allow people to go out into a, 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 a cattle pasture and shoot cows with arrows. And these are animals that we could easily track. They couldn't go run away and die slowly, so we could kill them. Um, effectively with arrows. It might take a few minutes for them to die, uh, but we don't even let people do that. And yet if it's a wild animal, you're perfectly comfortable with having a completely different standard for the welfare of that animal. Why, why should we treat wild animals any different than we treat captive animals? It's, it's, there's no logic there. They're both sentient creatures. They both deserve the same kind of empathy um, extended. And uh, you know, these assholes would have us, you know, they'll be, like I said, if we save the whales, what do you think is going to happen to whales? We'll just cull them. And they'll, they'll breed at a younger and younger age. They'll have a smaller and smaller body weight. They'll just be evolved to suit our culling. That's what's happened in, in all of these northeastern states in the, in the United States. we got this huge deer problem because we let these stupid sadistic hunters go out there and shoot their little arrows at them. And the deers are evolving to match the circumstance. So they're having three times as many foals they're, and, and they're having them younger just to, to, just to because that's the evolution we're forcing on them. So we're changing their whole construction, we're changing their whole lifestyle, um, we're changing their evolution to suit our um, bullshit. And they'd be better off, the more humane thing to do would be make them extinct and then to, to keep them as our prisoners, our slaves to our stupid entertainment, and that's all it's for anyway. Um, this whole idea that there's these hunters go out there and do some sort of responsible hunting anyway is just bullshit. I've seen the, the corpses uh, out in the woods, and uh, yeah, they'll cut the hindquarters off and they just leave the rest because it's too much work uh, you know, to, to process the animal completely. Um, so that's all bullshit too, that there's some great efficiency. Yeah, bullshit. Um, Look, the bottom line is this life sucks, okay? This whole living thing, the whole mechanism of this reproducing DNA molecule um, paradigm is fundamentally broken. It is a need machine. It goes out into the world, co collects parts, builds a copy of itself, so we can go out into the world, collect parts, and build a copy of itself. 
If I invented one and set it loose in the universe, nobody would give me a Nobel Prize, all right? Because they know where it goes, and it goes nowhere because it has to. It'll it'll start eating anything, and it'll do it without any kind of ethics or any kind of rational um, limitations to that gluttony. And and that's what this is all about. We are smarter. We are able to know better, and you're just pretending that we don't have to. Well, we do have, we know, the answer's out there, we've got it now, we've got the answer that um, we know that sentience is this precious thing and it can't be wasted or squandered and in practical fact nature wastes and squanders it in preposterous proportions and that doesn't give us license to be just as stupid. I mean, we are capable of being smarter than a DNA molecule. We're capable of being smarter than the process of natural selection. We can do intelligent selection. We can choose to be assholes, or we can choose to be responsible. We can choose to take responsibility for what we perpetuate in our systems. I mean, the fact is, if, if you embrace this nonsense, then you have to embrace every part of it. So, so, I mean, we could apply the same standards to the human race. I don't think Pyro would care for that. I don't, care he, I don't think he'd care for us calculating whether he's um, genetically up to snuff or whether his children are genetically up to snuff and maybe we should uh, cull them from our genetic herd, um, you know, to improve, um, you know, our survivability. Um, yeah, I don't think, th that's the double standard here. People wouldn't want to live under the tyranny they're imposing on the world. They wouldn't want to live, you wouldn't want some something this benign if you were the one in jeopardy. You wouldn't want some benign overlord looking at you and just diminishing you and, and saying you're not worth the trouble. I mean, it's just such bullshit. Um, all just to pretend that we're accomplishing something because you're, you're hungry. And that's what it comes down to. we got this raw burrito guy who just keeps making the same comment on every single video and just keeps talking about how chicken tastes good. Like, like somebody's arguing that chicken doesn't taste good. That's not, that's not the argument. Potato chips taste good, too. Um, but go ahead and try to make your argument saying how potato chips are evil or wrong or they cause immediate and direct suffering. But they don't. So it's a bullshit argument. It doesn't mean anything. Um, and it's, it's just your dietary preference. It's a dietary preference. You know, it's, it's not something immutable. It's not something um, you don't have the capacity to migrate from. And it's certainly not something you need to endorse the habituation in somebody else. Again, it's like the cigarette smoking argument. So it's one thing, you know, the persecution of people who do smoke, and it's a whole nother thing to make the argument that no kid should ever start smoking, that it's an addictive substance, that it's a pointless addiction, it goes absolutely nowhere, and that you shouldn't impose the addiction. So fine, be a meat eater. Think chicken tastes good. But why would you, in your rhetoric, create an excuse for anybody to embrace the idea that that habit should be a habit that some new human being should acquire if they don't need it. If they don't need to think chicken tastes good, why wouldn't it be better for them to think potato chips taste good or carrots taste good? I mean, it's just stupid. It's just irresponsible. It's lazy. It's just fat and lazy, and that's really the argument here. It's, it's just no discipline, no logical discipline, no requirement to stick to anything, any kind of rational framework. So every time you get in a little bit into a back into a little bit of a corner, you just say, "Plants feel" or some kind of crap, complete nonsense. So then you can waste people's time explaining to you why plants don't feel, so that the whole subject of the conversation is lost because now you're arguing about something that's just so fucking silly and so unrelated to any kind of reality. Um, but there's no point in having the argument anymore. So anyway, yeah. All right, it's just a throwaway video, I guess. I don't know if I'll put it as part of the formal debate. I wouldn't. Well, I guess I will. It's just kind of hard to organize this debate, just because it's 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 on too many subjects. Um, I mean, the argument should just be about: is there any ethical excuse for um, any kind of organized human social behavior that creates any unnecessary suffering. I mean, and the answer's got to be no.
and the easiest way to clean up the suffering isn't to find some better way to farm meat. It's just to not create human beings that have a taste for it or a need for it. And that's so easy to do. That's the easy choice. That's the easy solution. Is just don't um, grandfather the bad habit out. Uh, yeah, that's enough. See you next time.